Hi, I'm sure many of you have heard of comedy, laughing, and sometimes people do it while standing up, too. Anytime you talk about stand-up comedy on YouTube, an avalanche of comments comes in demanding that you do it yourself to actually know how hard it is, which to a certain extent I understand. It's a hard job to excel at. But if you want to defend comedians, then you better make sure the shit that they're saying is actually funny. So many fucking washed up bozos fucking posting online about how Twitter makes them fucking sad because there's non-binary people on it. Dave Chappelle's a 50-year-old man. Fucking grow up. In late 2018, Fox News announced a paid content service called Fox Nation. They started putting out content initially pretty slowly, but ramped up quite a bit in the last year or so. Fox Nation's content is like beyond insane to me. They decided to just continue production on shows that people don't really watch anymore, like Cops and Duck Dynasty. I will say though, the Duck Dynasty family is now hunting for buried treasure, and I do think that's pretty awesome. I do think that's a good idea for a show. I'll say it. Probably not that good though. Who is this for? Is it for old people trying to like stick with shows that everyone's already moved on from? It's what it feels like. The rest of their content includes great hits like Uncanceling Columbus. <laughs> No interruption with Tommy Laren. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I'm Tommy Laren. I say no, no. As much as I could just make a video reading the titles of different Fox Nation shows, I did talk about comedy earlier in this video, and I do intend to bring it up again right now. Roseanne Barr recently released a comedy special via Fox Nation. It's a Fox Nation original. It's like Netflix, but for if you're racist. Everyone knows Roseanne Barr, right? From the show Roseanne that aired 35 years ago. It's a classic. I'm always seeing Roseanne clips on TikTok. <laughs> Roseanne's comedy special is called Cancel This, which is in reference to when people got quite upset with her when she uh, called a black woman the combination of the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes. That is, it's, it, it is so normal that it's awesome. I thought the bitch was white! Damn it! After that, Roseanne kind of disappeared for a while, only to reemerge a blooming conservative flower. She's done a lot of media lately as an anti-cancel culture warrior, which is truly just a kitschy thing to be now. <laughs> it's so tacky. But now she's finally back. She hasn't done stand-up comedy in 16 years, so I bet it's really good now. You may have seen some clips from it. My pronouns are kiss my and yeah, that's how it is. That's the that's the comedy special. Before I actually talk about the comedy special, I have to talk about the show that they made called Who is Roseanne Barr? Who asked for that is the real show I want to see. I mean, it's not really a show. It's one episode of the Who is series. But what do you call that? Like, it's like a Roseanne Barr? OVA? AMV? I can't even imagine it's close to watchable, right? I glossed through it as best as I could, only to see that they're filming with like two different cameras with two different frame rates? Yeah, I'm good on that. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Roseanne Barr's stand-up is among the worst I've ever seen. Started oh, this fucking sucks. Seat. I don't even think she wrote jokes for it. It doesn't feel like there's any structure. On multiple different occasions, she had to ask the audience for words that she was forgetting in the middle of her sentence. Because they're developing developing their anti, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. And the audience was certainly happy to help because the they're going fucking nuts when she went on stage, wiggling their arms around and, and shit. I don't, I don't know what that's about. I don't care, really. Roseanne opens with a joke about hating her family, which is classic boomer humor, and it really sets the tone for the whole set. They don't agree with me politically. They're libtards, so they didn't show up. <laughs> the entire vibe just feels like a drunk grandma at an open mic night, not an auditorium with 300 people in it. Another part of her opening is um, making this bizarre joke that, like many jokes in Roseanne's set comes out of completely fucking nowhere about being able to like evaporate deer with her AR-15 legally in Texas. Because I can pull out my AR-15 and blow them just to smithereens legally. Even though she owns a macadamia nut farm in Hawaii. Did you guys know that? <laughs> and after getting settled for a bit, Roseanne starts explaining for like 25 minutes how and why she was canceled, throwing out all kinds of excuses and justifications. She really did think the bitch was white. I thought she's white. It was just a quirky moment that she had. She did mention that in the tweet that she got canceled for, she called the person she was talking about a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, but she conveniently forgets the Planet of the Apes part, which a member of the crowd did actually shout out at one point. <laughs> but even if you were just talking about the Muslim Brotherhood thing, I don't think conservatives, and especially not Roseanne, are going around calling random white people members of the Muslim Brotherhood. 
don't really think that's a thing. What are you talking about? My tweet was racist. Muslim ain't a race. I forgot to mention that she opened this whole section by saying I racially misgendered a woman. I got fired because basically I racially uh, misgendered somebody I thought was a white woman. Which, I don't even know what that means. There's a few times throughout the set where Roseanne just starts trailing off and forgets to finish the sentence that she started. Yeah, I guess they thought they shut me up, but guess what? <laughs> Anyway. And it happens like 10 minutes into the set. Once she got done talking about her cancellation, she then started talking about how she should have been on TV to learn in front of the public and show America that it's it's okay to, to learn from your mistakes. Something she says she's always wanted to do. And I could have learned something on behalf and shown something to America, which I always wanted to do that very thing anyway. I don't know what that means. But also, if you're going to learn from your mistakes, why do you have to do it on public television? Why can't you just, like, do it? <laughs> Maybe learning from your mistakes isn't coming back to do a Fox Nation exclusive stand-up special. I came back because I just, something's wrong with me or something. I, I just, something's- He ran out of money. At this point in the set, it's pretty obvious that Roseanne is at least drunk. She could be stoned because she does have this weird rant halfway through the show about legalizing weed. I ran on legalization of marijuana because it's a good, good drug. Also, sometimes they cut to the audience and I don't know, man, it's just kind of rough. Whoever's paying to see the Roseanne Barr comedy special in person is not going to see the kingdom of heaven. Roseanne starts talking about how she can't be funny without being racist, which her Fox contract says she can't be, which is really funny. It's actually the funniest part of the set, ironically is she talks about being censored and canceled when she willingly signed a contract that wouldn't let her be racist, transphobic, even though she still is, and won't let her say fuck more than three times. Three times tonight, I will be using the F word because my lawyers were able to go in and wrangle a three F word deal. I thought she didn't want rich assholes to win. She's letting them win. She's letting the rich assholes win. She is. I guess it's not censorious when the right is doing it or when it pays you the big bucks. Ka-ching, money. And then out of fucking nowhere, this woman just yells at Roseanne. No more bitches with stitches. We get to open our minds. That's right, we do, but shut up, bitch. But anyway, um, I mean. I swear to God that has nothing to do with fucking anything she's saying. There's gotta be a fucking gas leak in this room if these people think that this is funny. This is the biggest laugh from the audience in the entire show, to give you an idea of how good this set is. To follow up this amazing highlight, she then starts talking about how her parents met in high school. There's really no comedy to it. It's just a really boring, rambly story. She keeps describing her dad as a football hero. He was a football hero. Football hero. Football hero. Which, I don't feel like I've ever heard a human being being described as before. Like, I know, like, all oh, star captain football team. I understand that trope, but she just keeps saying football hero. <laughs> yeah, you know, my dad was the football hero with a big football on his chest, flying around. Roseanne just isn't good at telling stories. There are multiple cuts throughout the video that they produced from this live show of the editors having to cut around her, forgetting what she was saying. Stood in the corner chewing on my hair, but, uh... I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But before too long, she is right back on the hating my kids humor. And she has this really bizarre joke about her sons not being able to eat real cheese, so they eat soy cheese. They're too damn good for regular cheese. And then she uses that as a setup to talk about this time where she almost hit some woman's car and the woman got hysterical and knew that she was in show business and was trying to extort money from her. It really feels like talking to a great grandparent who shouldn't be allowed to drive. But before she really Really gets into the story, the gas leak in the room reaches its maximum point, and she says, Yeah, I'm acting like I'm nice, which I do all the time. It's the least I can do. And then the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a little haunting. I, I don't know what's happening. At one point during this insane story, she says, you know where I'm going with this. Right? You see where I'm going with this? No, I don't. No, no fucking clue. It could not be less clear where she is going with it. Shortly after, she starts talking about QAnon and the Great Awakening in a really bizarre way. You know, I figured out Q, Q, it stands for quarantine. 
the audience isn't really laughing at it because either she's not being funny or they don't know what QAnon is. And this is the point in the show where you start to hear more claps than laughs as she starts to devolve into this crazy anti-vax tirade. It's all bullshit, nothing but lies. Every single damn thing. She also talks about how she got COVID four times and can no longer taste or smell, but it's all still a lie and is still anti-vax. Like, she starts getting borderline emotional over the crimes the government has committed to innocent people, and then starts comparing that to the vaccine, even though she is an open Trump supporter. Could you give her a shot right in her little baby clitoris? Could you do that for me, Mr. Biden? <laughs> What's wrong with people? Then she pivots to talking about her deadbeat son, which, because her jokes are so poorly structured, it doesn't feel like a joke and really just feels like she's venting to an audience and it gets really uncomfortable. Especially when the room is dead silent because the audience doesn't know when to laugh. So they just start laughing at the mention of Fortnite. Uh, what's that other one? Fortnite, Call of Duty. But don't worry too long, she does get right back to the transphobia by saying, Your gender is... Get a job, that's your gender. Classic, Roseanne, really sticking it to these lazy liberals. It's hard to even comment on that one because it doesn't make sense. And then she just starts rambling about what is a woman? They don't even know what a woman is. That one they're asking all the time, what is a woman? Who? Who are you talking about? Fucking leftists aren't the one asking what a woman is. If she was talking about Matt Walsh, maybe this joke would make a little more sense. But she's not. And then she says, A woman is me which i don't know what that means either it's like she's trying too hard to get into this grift and it doesn't feel like it's working then roseanne throws out a joke that she stole from ted cruz my pronoun is kiss my ass my pronouns are kiss my ass literally stole that word for word i haven't really mentioned this yet but you might notice that she's wiping her nose in a lot of the clips that i'm showing why is she wiping her nose dude stop fucking wiping your no you're on a stage uh either with a tissue or a bandana she ran out of tissues so she had to use a bandana she had in her pocket <laughs> Yeah, that happens through most of the set. It's really gross. Then she starts talking about victim blaming in relation to Me Too, which is... These Me Too whores. I, I think it's in bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> but she's talking about the good old days where if you got molested, it was your fault. Bad joke premise. I'll say it. There's not a lot to this bit, but I did just want to show the clip where she's pretending to be her mother, spanking the child version of her for going near the old creepy pedophile's house. Didn't I tell you not to go around old Joe when he comes to the corner on his bike? I told you to stay away from him. You know what he does to the young girls, and there you are running up there to the corner knowing what he is going to do to you, and then you complain about it. Goes on for a long time, doesn't it? It's hard to convey just exactly how baffling her delivery is. Like, everything about the set is wrong. It's not even so bad it's good. It's just sad. The jokes have no structure to them, and the delivery is half-assed. I could deal with the tacky conservative humor if they at least had a little bit of energy behind them. Roseanne then starts talking about how there's no men anymore because they all want to be women, and continues wiping her fucking nose. So stop wiping your nose! She then asks if there's any women in the crowd that are older than her, and then and she gets completely distracted talking to a 71 year old woman named Kathy. You're 71 and you're a big sex fiend, is that what you're saying? She tosses out a couple of mid jokes about Jehovah's Witnesses and then I swear to God, out of fucking nowhere, throws out a Bill Cosby joke. I'm never going on another date with Bill Cosby. You can believe me. With no context, no setup, it's just not funny. It's not funny because it doesn't, you just said Bill Cosby and then people laughed because they recognized the name. I, I just don't know. Then she says that she's psychic, so does some crowd work, but it really just feels like she's stalling for time. You've been losing weight and you wonder if you'll get back to wearing your size 42 suit again. Yes, you will, sir. They'll bury you in it. Just a mean thing to say, really. Then she moves on to an okay joke about writing suicide notes specifically for people that she's mad at. Well, now it seems that I've killed myself and I just want you to know that you're to blame. It would be much better if the joke didn't go on for like, I don't know, a third of the set. At least it feels that way because all she's doing is reading a fully typed out piece of paper. And then she does it like four times. She does like, she has like four of them. Is this just the rest of the set? I think it might be. People stop laughing 
laughing after like the second suicide note. But one of the last ones is about how uh, McDonald's doesn't have the McRib all year long and how um, how hard that is for Roseanne. And it goes on for a long time. And then people are basically not laughing at all until, again, completely out of nowhere just says, And I'm loving it! <laughs> Oh, oh. No, it doesn't make sense. I can't give you any more context for it to be funny. And of course, the crowd fucking loves it. The entire set, she got more laughs by doing catchphrases and references than anything else. Then she closes the set on the saddest suicide note, which is one that she wrote to ABC about her show being canceled and her life falling apart. It's really sad to hear her talk about like this, especially so publicly. Um, Not that I feel bad or anything. And that's the end of the set. <laughs> Roseanne, like a lot of legacy comedians, doesn't have a lot of real life experience anymore to turn into jokes and humor. I mean, just last year, she sold one of her multi-million dollar mansions to buy another one in LA, even though she spends the majority of her time on her macadamia nut farm in Hawaii. How is someone like this, someone who's basically become a business owner in the last 20 years, supposed to relate to normal people? A lot of older comedians have let the world slip past them. On top of becoming very wealthy in the last 30 or so years, a lot of comedians Comedians have just fallen so far out of touch in general that they can't communicate with normal people, much less make them laugh. It ends up just being a really sad and a really difficult to watch experience to listen to comedians who once might have been funny, not that I think Roseanne was ever funny, constantly complain about how they don't understand the world around them. That's not comedy, it's just sad. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please click like if you had a good time or subscribe for more videos just like this every week. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there is content on there, you can see content on there. I I have a third channel now called Ethan Style where I want to just upload funny silly little videos for myself if you'd like to look at that. Thank you again for watching and make sure to tune in for the next video where I do a stand-up special but I'm upside down the whole time? Bye.